Welcome to this installment of the Vital Metrics video series. Today we will be discussing Scope 3 emissions, the indirect emissions resulting from an organization's value chain. While Scope 1 and 2 emissions are frequently reported, Scope 3 emissions tend to be overlooked, despite comprising a large portion of a company's emissions, up to 80%. As such, failure to report on Scope 3 is likely to create an inaccurate picture of your company's emissions profile and susceptibility to climate change risks. The Corporate Accounting Greenhouse Gas Protocol defines Scope 3 as those indirect emissions associated with an organization's supply chain or value chain. On a basic level, we can think of Scope 3 emissions as encompassing all emissions resulting from an organization's activities that are not included in Scope 1 for on-site generation or Scope 2 for purchased heat and electricity. These emissions are broken into 15 categories, including purchased goods and services, capital goods, and waste generation from operations, to name a few. Scope 3 emissions can be broken down into two groups, those arising from upstream activities and those from downstream activities. To help to conceptualize this, let's imagine the upstream and downstream emissions of a cookie company. Upstream, the cookie company has to purchase supply goods like flour, sugar, and butter, as well as capital goods like factory equipment and delivery trucks. These all have emissions associated with their acquisition and processing. These goods and products must be shipped upstream, and employees must commute to work and travel for business, generating fuel-based emissions from transportation. The emissions resulting from the cookie company's use of rented office space and waste generated in cookie production are also accounted for upstream of actual cookie production. Downstream, the cookie company has to get its cookies to stores. Transportation and distribution emissions are accounted for here in Scope 3. Before those cookies can exit the factory, their processing will result in emissions as well. Once a cookie is eaten, use phase, yum, any product or packaging will be processed or deposited in landfills. Finally, if the cookie company has any franchise stores or investments, the emissions associated with their operations are also accounted downstream. Of all these categories, purchased goods and services tend to have the largest emissions impact. This covers all cradle-to-gate emissions from the production of tangible products and intangible services that are purchased or acquired by the organization in the reporting year. There are a number of methods that can be used to calculate the impact of purchased goods and services. The supplier-specific method relies on product-level cradle-to-gate inventory data from suppliers. The hybrid method also relies on supplier-specific data, but it fills any gaps with calculated industry average data. The average data method estimates emissions by collecting information on relevant units, such as mass, volume, or number of widgets. The, sp the spend-based method calculates emissions based on a company's expenditures using national industry averages. The ideal method depends largely on the data available and whether the reporting organization prioritizes more specific or accurate emissions calculations. Two more important Scope 3 emission categories that we should highlight are business travel and employee commuting. Either of these can be calculated by applying the appropriate emissions factor to the amount of fuel consumed in the travel or to the length of distance traveled. If business travel or employee commuting contribute significantly to an organization's overall Scope 3 emissions and data is available on the types and quantities of fuel consumed, then the fuel-based method is generally recommended. If these emissions are not significant, then the organization may look to the distance-based method or the spend-based method which applies a secondary emissions factor to the amount of money spent on business travel. In the case of employee commuting, a business may use either the distance-based method or the average data method, which is based on national commuting pattern data. Now we've mentioned the 15 categories, we've discussed upstream and downstream emissions, and we highlighted some of the more important Scope 3 categories. What else do the people need to hear about Scope 3? Well, there are a couple trickier aspects. For instance, fuel and gas are included in Scope 3 in addition to Scope 1 and 2, but in Scope 3 they refer specifically to the extraction, production, and transportation emissions associated with fuel and energy distribution, not the combustion phase emissions. Engaging in climate change strategy in the value chain enables companies to identify and understand risks and inform investment decisions. The requisite research and analysis provide a great opportunity to identify hotspot opportunities to improve efficiencies, set reductions, targets, 
and track greenhouse gas performance over time. Reporting Scope 3 is a valuable opportunity to engage with partners in the value chain to not only increase accountability, but also reduce energy use, material use, and future supply chain risks. Reporting Scope 3 is a clear point of differentiation and an indicator of an organization's commitment to sustainability. This presents a great opportunity to enhance corporate reputation and increase production efficiency. Thank you for joining us today, and to learn more, please check out our other videos or contact us at vitalmetricsgroup.com.